So we'll give you a minute to answer this question. Does your company experience significant downtime waiting for parts? I know how I would have answered this. And the results are 52% said yes and 48% said no. If I was a betting person, I would have guessed the yes is much higher than that. So you guys are doing a good job there if only 52% are waiting. Okay, Luke, I'm gonna go ahead and hand it over to you for your presentation. All right, good morning. You guys see my uh, screen there or am I sharing it right? I can see the Ohio State background. Uh, well, it must have switched on me then. Which is fitting after the university, there we go. Season, right? I think that was on purpose. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> All right, did I switch it right, Lynn? Yes, now I'm seeing the presentation. All right, perfect. All right, good morning, everyone. Um, so I have been with Newman for many, many years now. Um, we have multiple facilities here in the U.S. We have three in the U.S., one in uh, Mexico. Um, we require or we rely heavily on automation. Um, I have actually started talking with Jason at a Plex Supply Chain Conference, uh, I'd say at least two, three years ago. Uh, he actually introduced the Silla product to me. Um, and when I we did that, that was my first thought was how can I integrate this into our systems? Because I, I, that's one of my big things I love to deal with is uh, integration. Um, as far as at Newman uh, for scan guns, uh, we, we had a combination of things. Um, we were using Keyent, which is the Android, um, some Windows mobile ones. Uh, but we, we started we started using some of the, the Sela here uh, on our Kians guns, and we got really good feedback on how they handled. Um, so then we started digging deeper with the request management. Um, part of that was downtime. Uh, we had we had downtime on the end of the lines, waiting for empty containers, uh, waiting for full containers to be picked up. Uh, we have material handlers that would be driving to take a product to one area when they could have been taking multiple products to the area because they would need the same they need a, a similar product or another product in the area uh, a line or two down um, so uh, that was one of my big requests from Sella in order to start using it was uh, automatic requests because we do so much integration here and I knew that using Mach 2 we know when a container is produced line side so I was like well we can send those requests automatically and so uh, Jason started digging in and uh, finally he came back with me back to me uh, for the final product of uh, sending requests automatically using APIs um, so um, how do we get there uh, problems waiting on parts um, Manufacturing would be waiting on carts, so they are essentially at a standstill stop waiting on containers or waiting for uh, child parts on the line. Uh, material handling group, they're, they were doing a great job. I mean, a lot of these guys have been doing it for many, many years, so they knew what they were doing, but they're, A, you had one guy overworked or you had a guy that was, you know, off for the day, so they put somebody else in that place, and so, he, you know, he might, he was trying to keep up the best he could. Um, and then you had other guys that were driving, looking for work, essentially. Um, they they had empty forks. Um, and so that's obviously not being efficient. Um, and so, and then there wasn't a whole lot of way to actually track what was going on for who had, who was doing a great job and who was, you know, slacking off. Um, so we started partnering with uh, Sela. Um, that's when we got the work with them to get the API going. Um, 
And then also we started working with Coors Engineering a little bit um, as I hadn't really done a whole lot with the uh, API side uh, with Mach 2. Um, but working together with both of them, uh, we quickly uh, arrived at a solution for um, sending requests automatically to the scan guns. So now when a container is full at the end of the line, uh, the request is sent automatically to the scan gun, notifying them that, hey, this line has a full ready to be picked up. Um, and then we're doing, the, we're doing the same kind of thing. We're actually checking source inventory when that full container is generated. So that way we can see if they are low on any child parts. And if they're low on child parts, then we actually direct that request to another uh, material handler who will pick up the child parts to bring to the line. So now they can essentially be more efficient as well uh, by, you know, if they're going to pick up one child part and they get a notification of another request for a part that's picked being picked up in the same area. Now they can grab both those parts rather than running back to the same area to grab a, another container of a different uh, source inventory of child parts. So how does it work? Um, lines are producing uh, parts using Mach 2. Uh, we, we do a lot of serialized inventory. So we're recording pieces to uh, derive that full container. Um, once the full container is generated, um, I'm sending the request to the what we call comp part uh, forklift operator. Uh, they'll that way they're notified that the the line has a full container that's ready to be picked up. Um, at the same time, I check current bill of material for the work center. Uh, I have some uh, manual configurations in there right now for what the minimum inventory we want line side is um, and if it's below that uh, amount then we will automatically send a request to the child parts uh, material handler uh, to let them know that they need that uh, child part as well um, for those familiar with Mach 2 uh, this is a little bit of what it looks like um, there's not a whole lot to it but um, it took some time uh, just thinking things through, sending the right API calls for, you know, requests that are already out, seeing what requests are out there, sending new requests and directing the request to the right uh, zone. Uh, some of the successes that we have uh, seen, um, creating a culture change for forklift operators. We had some that were, the, those are typically the guys that have, been doing it forever i mean they've been you know they've been doing the same job of material handling or uh picking up child or comp parts for years so there was a little bit of pushback from them at first um a lot of that was just you know hey i know what i'm doing i, I don't need a another you know app to tell me to you know go get parts or whatever that you know but we explained to them that ultimately it can hopefully make them more efficient and also to um simplify things so you know if you're going out to get one rack and you get a request for you know that the other line has completed a, a rack you can bring in both at the same time um there is obviously a little you know just the the the, the negativity a little bit in the beginning um but i feel it's 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 turned around they're they're liking it better um definitely some success there um people are looking at what they keep line side um so that was part of the project as well with reducing the amount of child parts that we kept line side there was often times that they would bring an excess and so then we would end up with a ton of parts child parts line side and so we want to reduce what we're keeping line side uh, just to use our plant floor space more efficiently um, and then also it's it's helping keep them more accurate as far as you know hey we loaded 10 containers line side now you know and the or plex what's plex say we have you know if, if we're keeping it at a smaller amount now that'll help us to utilize that and uh, be more efficient at hey this container says it's here line side and now it's not so that that's part of it as well um insight into who the high performers are so it's given us insight into who's loading what containers to where um, it's 
you know, who is handling most of the workload as far as our material handlers go. Um, there's some really nice dashboards within Cella that kind of help narrow those things down so you can see who's doing what, um, how long it's taking to handle those requests. So you can see that, you know, for some reason, where it's really taking a long time to pick up requests in this area, you can go and see, oh, well, we, you know, we have a replacement operator in there today or, um, you know, why are they struggling today? You know, or basically go get feedback directly at the source. And then uh, reducing downtime waiting on parts. Um, I don't have exact numbers on this, but I know that we that's it's part of our big target that we're working towards today. Um, this is one of those examples right here of uh, trying to reduce. Uh, we had uh, a ton of parts just being dropped line side just because they're low volume containers as far as how many parts are in a container but obviously this is a little bit in excess um, and I know also uh, Jason is uh, working with uh, our logistics group here on a uh, tugger uh, configuration to uh, reduce this stuff even further I tend to speak quick so uh, I guess what, what do we have for questions Let's see. It looks like you must have done a great job explaining it. I don't see any questions at this time. If anyone has a question, um, feel free to type that in or raise your hand. So did you have a lot of pushback from the forklift drivers as far as the visibility that this is enabling you guys now to see you know what's what they're doing yeah. yeah i mean i mean there was a little bit of that but i mean it, it's just all about i guess how you approach it with them um you know i try to explain to explain to them that hey it's, it's helping us show that you're doing a good job you know if you're doing a good job you have nothing to worry about you know if right. you're slacking yeah you're, you're you're gonna get caught but ultimately you know if you're doing a good job you have nothing to worry about it's going to show us that you're doing an efficient job and maybe you know maybe you're overworked maybe we can you know get somebody to help you because you're, you're doing too much right. so it's i guess it's, a lot of it's just how you word it and uh, feed it back to them um okay so we do have a couple of um questions coming in let's see so you have a heckler it seems like that said why are you taking all of jason's time we love him too <laughs> <laughs> That's from Peter, so you can give Peter a hard time later. Um, okay, we have a question here. How many different components do you have on work centers? I ask in regard to calculating the minimum inventory levels. Um, so. it, var it varies by the line. Um, like some of our, our SASH lines, I mean, they could have probably, I would guess, in the neighborhood of seven, eight parts max. Um, but if they're probably in the neighborhood of five or six, um, on average per uh, line that we do. Okay. Someone wanted to know if this would work in classic or you would need to be transitioned to UX. I believe it works in both. Um, I mean, that'd be a good question for Jason to confirm, but it's, I believe it would work with both just because it, it, it's accessing it on the API level. We can follow up on, it, on the answer with that one. Um, are the minimum levels of component different depending on the job? Or is um, it just by the part? It's kind, of, it's kind of the way I have, the way I actually have it currently, uh, the machine integration, um, I'm just kind of basically taking a final container. So we'll say a final container is 30 pieces. And, you know, if it requires one of each part, and I say, hey, do I have enough to make the next container? So, you know, I multiply each of those parts by we'll call it, we'll say 30 and you know is my minimum inventory level below 45 pieces you know or is my current inventory below 45 pieces if it's below 45 pieces let's go ahead and send a request for that next container to give it a little bit of time to get line side um i know jason is actually working on some stuff on his side so that you can actually deter you can narrow that down even further uh through, through cella so you can define it Per part, so you can say, "Hey, I want you know, send a request at 45 of these parts, but these parts we can wait down until we get down to, you know, 
less, you know, 30 pieces or whatever it is. So he's making it a little more granular. Okay, um, and it looks like Jason and Peter both responded that it does work in classic. So it will work in both classic or UX. Um, and then let's see, um, looks like there's some other some other hecklers here, Luke, so you're real popular. Um, sorry, our Spartans had to beat you guys last night. <laughs> That's <laughs> And he said, did, did this affect the quantity of drivers required? Did it open up space with less inventory? I'm curious about some of the short-term results. I know this is pretty new. So that is that is one thing that our materials manager, uh, Tammy, is actually working towards is to hopefully reduce the number of uh, stock drivers that we have. Um, so a lot of it is based on what we call zones in our uh, throughout the plant. And so you might, right now we might have one stock driver just handling one line where with the request management, we can kind of balance that out and you can kind of do, you know, hey, this stock driver handles this line and this line or, you know, your multiple areas just because they can get those requests now. So it, it's, it allows them to see who's handling what so they can assign people to more than one line or more than one zone. Um, and, you know, if one, maybe, want that one person is all I all they can handle for that one line uh depending on how busy it is and it, it just gives them that data to be able to make those decisions okay um another question is this easily scalable we have roughly 60 to 80 components on each line for me the way I do I'm doing it through machine integration it is easily scalable um, and the reason for that is I, I've just set it up within our Mach 2 with um, like a template. So basically I can drag and drop a folder into the work center folder uh, within Mach 2 and everything just kind of connects up and automatically starts sending requests at that point because it'll go out and it'll, it'll say, hey, this work center is a part of this zone. And then as far as Cellus go, Cella goes, they check by zone so okay hey this zone is covered by this person and so it sends a it will send the request to the correct person okay great um and how often is the seller performance being reported out and where um i mean as, as far as performance of the operators or i'm not sure i think they're asking maybe like how often is the the data being reviewed maybe and where are they reviewing it at is it in Cella or Plex um I would say it would be a, a big piece of it they'd be reviewing in Cella itself um and then they can correlate some of that data if they have questions or you know things like that they can look back at Plex as well to see you know what jobs or things they were running um and as far as who's reviewing it that'd be Tammy and her group logis logistics group um how often they're reviewing I'm not exactly sure Okay. Um, and then we have someone from JIC who said that they're in the beginning discussions of developing a, a similar application here and would Newman be open for a visit? So we can give you their contact information maybe offline and then you can um, yeah. talk to them directly. 